Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. This is Doug. Um, <clears throat> stepping in here tonight uh, for Rick, we kind of switch off on this um, class every once in a while. And I have to be honest with you guys, I don't have much for slides. Well, I, this is the only slide that you're going to see. And this is going to be a bit of a departure from what you usually see me do, where I'm just really, you know, getting into charts and, and digging on those charts. Um, but I want to talk about this idea of win-loss ratio and how important it is to get your trading on track. You know, I talk to a lot of people during the course of a day. Um, a lot of, a lot of emails, a lot of things come in um, through social media and and through those, you know, different avenues. And I get lots and lots of correspondence with with people. And you know, one of the things that comes up a lot <clears throat> when I'm working with someone or helping someone on their trading is this whole idea of um, win-loss ratio and so I want to spend some time on that tonight if you guys feel free to ask questions this is going to be um, relatively um, informal I guess I should say tonight because um, tonight is about just talking about those concepts that can really help you improve as a trader and so feel free to ask those questions but I want to start off with this idea because when I sit down with a lot of folks and work with them on their trading, some things just immediately began to pop out as, as glaring problems. And no matter how many times we talk about this, um, talk about the importance of some of these steps, it's, it's the habit, it's the general nature of people to not want to do that because that's not the fun stuff of trading, okay? And what I'm talking about is, is doing some simple things. First, having some kind of a structure for your trading. Some kind of a structure for your day. So many, so many times I talk with people and they just feel like they're constantly in a panic mode they're they're rushing all the time everything is a big stressor and one of the reasons that is 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 there's no preparation okay. we have to prepare for our day just like any other business you know when I was in the building business I would often um, hit a restaurant at about 5 a.m. every you know every morning I would hit a restaurant and I would come in to have my breakfast and I would roll out plans and I was writing out everything that needed to be done for the day um, I would even go so far as to make a, a cut list on, on, on these houses of so I could walk onto the job site hand it to the guy that's gonna do all of the cutting to cut all these parts and we had a plan for the day. We knew what we what what was supposed to happen. I knew everything that um, needed to occur, and hopefully nothing surprised us too many times. But always having a plan, and I believe preparation is extremely important if you want to start building a good, strong win loss ratio. The, the next thing um, that you need to do besides that preparing is you need to have some kind of, um, of method to record your trades. You know, <clears throat> I run into a lot of people and I will ask them about their win-loss ratio. First off, they don't know. They have no idea what their win-loss ratio is. They just know that their account's not growing. And I always like to demonstrate something, you know, right out of the gate with folks. And that is, if you have a 50-50 win-loss ratio, you win five trades, lose five trades. Do you guys know you can make money doing that? You can actually be a pretty profitable trader with a 50-50 win-loss ratio if you manage those trades correctly okay so one of the steps 
and and handling or improving your win loss ratio is knowing what it is if you haven't actually sat down and kind of figured out what your trading past has been how in the how do you expect to move forward as a trader how can you expect to improve as a trader unless you know where you've been does that make sense guys <clears throat> So one of the things I say quite often is you need to record your trades. Now, some people take this to the extreme, you know, um, they, you know, build this great big giant spreadsheet with all different kinds of, you know, pages to it and all kinds of fanciness. You don't need to do that. You can take a notebook and write down a few of the key things in that, in that notebook when you entered what the signal was that you entered on, what price you paid, when you got out, and what your P&L was. It doesn't have to be a big fancy deal or a big time consuming thing, okay? And here's why that's important. You know, one of the things that you've heard me say a lot and you've heard Ed talk a lot about this with, with Trader Vision 2020 is to do more of what's working. But if you don't know what's working because you're not recording those trades, how in the world are you ever going to improve your win-loss ratio? If you keep doing the same things over and over and over and expecting a different result... Well, Einstein called that insanity, right? You can't keep doing, repeating those same things. So one thing we want to do is we want to study our past trade results. We want to take a look at those past trade results and we want to see if we're making a repetitive mistake. Okay, and I can tell you exactly one of the repetitive mistakes that I made all the time in my trading that cost me a ton of money and it cost me a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of headache. It cost me confidence in my abilities to trade. And that is I was afraid, I was always afraid if the stock was trending, I need to get a different color here. If the stock was trending, I was constantly afraid Stock could move up and pull back. I was afraid of this resistance right here. I would never take this trade here. I would always wait till it went up here. Then take the trade. And then guess what happened? I waited for that breakout to occur. I would finally get into that trade and the stock could pull back and I'd get stopped out in the position. So I was constantly living in fear of this price resistance. And what I finally learned is that when I bought stocks at support rather than at resistance or near resistance, my win-loss ratio went up. And guys, I'm not talking about just a little bit. I'm talking about a lot. It changed, okay? Because what's a really good, what's a really easy way to, to increase your win-loss ratio? I mean, this is the easiest way in the world to increase your win-loss ratio. Stop making the mistake that's costing you all of those losses. Does that make sense, guys? You gotta stop. If We gotta figure out those trades, what's going on in here with our trades. And we gotta figure out what's costing us consistently. What mistake are we making over and over and over continuing to plague our win-loss ratio? So a big, a really, really big way to help your win-loss ratio 
is to study your past trades. Now, something I used to do, and I did this for a long, long time, okay, at the end of every week, I would take every single trade and I would start with my losers. And I would go through and I would look for anything that I could do to have, to have improved that trade. Okay, anything where I was making this repetitive mistake where I would chase into a trade, where I would rush into a trade without a plan, where I would take trades that had less probability of or less um, potential reward in them than the risk on the trade. And all these little tiny tweaks, you know, we often think as traders that the thing that's going to fix our trading problem is we need to go learn about a new indicator or we need this new service or we need something, you know, there's something out there that I'm just missing something. I got to go spend the money on that and that's going to solve my problem. But it doesn't, right? It doesn't solve the problem because we haven't actually focused on what the problem is. And that problem is normally identified if you look at those losing trades. If you take a look at those losers and try to identify and really critically look at them, what those losers are costing you. in your confidence, in your ability to grow your account and everything, because we're repeating the same mistakes over and over. <clears throat> okay. So keep it simple in how you record the stuff. It doesn't have to be fancy. And you don't have to make a, any kind of a marathon session out of this, especially if you do it at the, end, at the end of every week or on a Saturday or something like that. Sit down for a few minutes and review those trades. Start to notice the, the important parts of that. What did you do in this trade? What created that problem? And I can tell you most of the time, when I sit down with someone I'm working with, coaching or whatever, it's really not that hard to identify. Because we'll say, well, what did, you know, show me your losing trades. Well, I lost on this one. Okay, where did you buy? This is one thing that always messes, that that is a problem. And this is something that my mentor got on me about and finally got through my head how to fix is just write down the information. Okay. She'd say, well, where'd you enter? And I'd say, well, somewhere around here. Where did, where was your stop loss? Well, you know, somewhere around here. Guys, that's not a plan. That's a hope that might be a fantasy, but it's not a plan. And there's no way that you're going to be able to improve your trading if you don't have a better quality plan for each trade, a reason why you entered, an understanding of the risk in the trade before you take it, an understanding of the potential what that trade could produce in profits before you take it. Okay. That is a key factor in improving your win-loss ratio. You know, guys, if, you, if you're if you a, a win-loss ratio, if you take a look at your win-loss, and a lot of people, I, I'm telling you, a lot of people, if they actually are honestly evaluating wins and lo losses, most people come in really close to five and five. And why do you suppose that happens? Why do you come in pretty close to five and five? 
because if you're doing any kind of technical analysis at all, you should have at least a 50-50 chance of winning the trade. Yeah, it's a coin flip because we're right there. I mean, we're in the mix of this. The majority of time, it's right here. Now imagine if all you did is identify one mistake that reduced this loss column to four and this becomes six. You wanna talk about a dramatic increase or improvement, do that. Find that first mistake that you're making repetitively and stop doing it. But you're never going to find that repetitive mistake if you don't take the time to record your trades. Okay? If you don't take the time to record your trades, if you don't take the time to say, this is where I entered, this is why I entered, this is what I was trying to do, this is what my uh, potential in the trade was, this is what my risk was in the trade. If you don't know that information, how can you improve as a trader? You know, if you walk into any Walmart or any of these big retailers, you walk in there not only do they have stats as to where a product um, sells the best, if it sells best in the aisle, if it sells best on an end cap, if it sells best on the lower level, or if it sells best on the upper level, they know that information. They have the statistics. They know what makes people respond to that product. Well, we have to know our trading the same way. We have to know our trading that well. We need to find out what's creating these issues, okay? And start eliminating them. Just remove one of your bad trades. And I, an exercise that I talk with a lot of folks about. Take your biggest losing trade of the month and remove it. Okay, take it off like it was a freebie. Take it off. How much did that improve your trading? How much did that improve your results? And sometimes it's so incredibly changing just by removing that one trade. Well, if I wouldn't have let that loss run like that, I would have had a great month. that one mistake okay is this making sense guys I, I know this is a real big departure on what I normally do you know fancy chart you know just really digging into the price action but this stuff this stuff here is so key to improving yourself as a trader that I, I wanted to speak about it and I wanted to get, um, you know, see if, if, if this resonated with a few folks because I can tell you this changed my life when I went to work and studying those trades. Okay. Now, when you start identifying these problems, well, doggone it, I keep buying at resistance. I keep waiting till it moves up so much that I have so much confidence that it's going up, I buy it right at the time that it's ready to pull back. Okay? When you start identifying those problems, now we have to create a rule and we have to practice the discipline of maintaining that rule. Okay? One of the things that plagues a lot of traders is that we do, don't have the discipline. We still want to race around. We still want to rush to everything. I don't have time to do that. You can't afford not to do these things, guys. You really can't. You can't afford not to do this stuff, okay? 
We have to eliminate that big losing trade. We have to figure out how we enhance this side over here just a little bit. And, and most of the time, it's a little tiny tweaks. There's folks in here right now that I know that if they sit down and look at their trades, they're going to find out that they have a habit of just rushing into a trade. There's never a plan. They just hear something about a stock. They see something and they just rush in. They don't know what they're risking in the trade. They have to fix that problem. See, and see, here's the other thing, guys. Nobody can fix it for you. There's no service. There's no system. There's no indicator that's going to fix that problem for you. You have to identify it, see it, and make the decision to be disciplined enough to stop that practice. That's the hard part, right? Because we all have to look at that person in the mirror and say, look, I'm screwing this up. I'm not going to do it again. Okay. So you have to find those little things that are in the trade. The next thing that I run into all the time when it comes to improving win-loss ratio is the ability to take a profit. You are never going to improve your win-loss ratio if you find it difficult to take a profit. So much of the time in trading when we're, I'm working with someone, how many of in here, how many in here right now even, even in the last two weeks, you've had a trade that's been up more than $100. But you turned it into a loser before you closed it. And isn't that more painful? Isn't that even more painful than entering a trade and just the next morning it moves against you and you got out and, and, it, and it, it smacked you on the head because the market just, you know, gave you, gave you a hard lump, okay? Isn't that worse? When we let that winning trade go into a loser? Big time pain, right? You know, there's one thing about day trading that everyone can learn a lot from. And that's the ability to take a profit. Day traders will often take profits at 25 cents, 35 cents. We see folks in the room or day traders. Stalker will sometimes, she took a trade, she got out 12 cents. She took profits. All right. If we don't find a way to get comfortable taking profits, we're always going to be in a situation where we can't have a win-loss ratio more than 50-50. Okay. Okay. So how do you go about taking, getting used to that idea of taking profits? Think about your trade goal. What are you trying to do this month in your trading? You know, maybe over the course of the year, you're hoping to have a 20% return in your account. Okay. And maybe this month your goal is, I don't know, maybe this month your goal is $2,000. Okay. Well, how are you going to make that $2,000 happen if you never take a profit? We're always wringing our hands. Where do I take a profit? Trying to manipulate, trying to pick the very top, get the last second, last penny out of it you possibly can. We've got $350 up in this trade. 
we go get some a bite to eat or use the bathroom and come out come back and it's only three hundred dollars in the trade and we will literally sit there and watch that three hundred dollars disappear because we want three hundred and fifty dollars how many have ever done that you saw that number thought oh my gosh I finally got a great one here and let that winning trade go to nothing because doggone it I wanted that I want that number back it'll come back right we've all done that so how do you fix it Sully's asking how do you fix it have a goal what are you trying to achieve this month? How many trades do you trade on average? If you trade five trades a week, maybe you trade more, maybe you trade less. How many trades do you need to make that week happen? Because we know if we need to make $2,000 for the month every week, what do we have to do? We need to shoot for 500 bucks. Right? And if we don't know what this number is, what we're trying to achieve, if we don't know where we're going, you know, there's the old saying, if you don't know where you're going, any place is okay. But that's not true in trading, right? If we don't know where we're going, what do we end up usually doing? We usually end up going backwards. Because we don't have a plan. We didn't take those $100 profits that would have got us there because we wanted more we let greed get in the way and I'm not telling you that you have to say okay as soon as it makes a hundred bucks I have to take the profit or, or whatever that number is for you I'm saying you have to you need to lock it in stop letting greed get in the way of taking profits if you want to have a high win-loss ratio you got to get comfortable taking profits you have to. That's the only way it's going to work. So step number one here that we talked about, you've got to go back and review your trades. You've got to look for those mistakes that are creating those repetitive losses. Okay, we've got to remove those. Okay, one at a time. This is a slow process. You just got to work through the details. Find out what is creating that repetitive problem and then have the discipline to fix it. You've got to get comfortable, number two, with taking profits and doing it consistently. I take profits all the time that are nowhere near what I hoped the trade was gonna make. But I do it because, well, this is what I live on. You know, I, I asked a question of uh, folks in Right Way Options the other day. Um, what size of profit is too small a profit to take? Because I hear this all the time. Well, I was only up 100 bucks. Okay. Wouldn't you rather have that hundred bucks back than, than that hundred dollar loss that you have now? Yeah, there's no profit small enough that's better than taking a loss, right? So why don't we take them? We don't take them because of greed. I want more. We don't want to admit that we might be wrong on the trade. We're not trying to manage ourselves to a goal, whatever your number is for the week. I don't care if it's $10,000. I don't care if it's 
a hundred dollars. If you're not managing yourself to that goal, whatever that is for the week, you're not doing your job. Now, I get this question all the time, and, and it's kind of funny I get this question all the time because most of the time we're not reaching our goals, okay? Because first we didn't set them. And then I get this question, well, what happens when I reach $1,000? What do I do, just stop? No. Keep trading and keep working managing that because we all know we go through periods of the market where making money is pretty easy. Keep trading. Follow the same habits that made that thousand dollars and keep repeating that trade over and over and over. Building that account because we all know when we get a big run like that, there could be a long period that it really dries up. Okay? So we have to evaluate our past print trades, and then we have to have a plan, a goal, how we're going to take profits and do it consistently. We're reaching out there consistently, trying to make money in the market. I would rather somebody tell me, man, my goal is $1,000 a week, that's what I really want to do. I, I, I'm trading a $200,000 account. I need about $1,000 a week to, to really make me where I want to be at the end of the year. I would rather hear them tell me, well, I missed it. I took, I took several $50 profits. They didn't turn out. And I only made 800 bucks this month. That's a good problem to have, right? Because... They advance their account. And what will happen is they'll disappoint themselves. Well, I didn't make it. All right, did you make money? Yeah. Okay, you moved your account forward. You did your job as a trader. You advanced your account. That's what we're here to do. Is to move it forward. Okay, not every month are you going to hit that goal. There's going to be some months where you'll blow that goal away. And you know how exciting it is? And this is something I, I think might be really handy to a lot of folks. Take that notebook that I talked about at the top of the page. Great big letters, great big red numbers, I mean. Write down that goal, whatever it is. Okay, thousand bucks. And then your job is to start whittling that off. Well, I got 150 out of that trade. What do I got left? Well, I got 180 out of this trade. Okay, what do I got left? Because there's no better rewarding feeling than just moving that down. And you know what happens when you move that down? And I don't care if it's $25 profits. When you move that down, you realize I've advanced my account. Here's the other thing that'll happen. You get close to the end of the month and you've got 900 bucks that you've made. You're a hundred bucks away from your account of, of making that goal for the month. You know what happens right in here? you start getting really picky about the trades you take. Because the last thing you want to see is that $900 slip backwards. You get really picky about the trades you take. Because I am so close. I'm not going to risk that money back. You see Rick do that all the time. He's holding, he's putting himself out there and posting it on the website. This is what I've done. Do you know how much pressure there is on Rick on this? Think about this for a second. Pressure on Rick in that trading to not let that slip backwards. To not let that losing trade 
kill what he's got going there. And this is all he's doing, really. He's just continuing to advance that account. Whatever he can advance it at, that's what he advances it at. And he does, and he's really cautious about letting that loser hurt that account, hurt that trading. That's how he has a high win-loss ratio. Make sense? So we have to review our trades. We have to do a better job of finding out what mistake we're repeating or what mistakes we are repeating over and over causing us problems. We have to have a goal that we're working toward, a reason that holds us accountable and responsible to the trades we take, not just rushing into anything. Okay. Now, I made mention of the fact that not every month is a great month of the market. Not every week is a great week in the market. Okay. So what do we do when the market's not performing well for us? What should we do? We should slow down our trading. Take the example of Rick. What did he do? He went to cash yesterday. Now, this is a guy who has over a 400% return in this account that he's recording online. Does he have room to take some losses? Yeah. But what did he do? He went to cash. And he wasn't even shy about that. Hey, I don't like this market. I'm going to slow down. Guys, there's a huge lesson in that. And that comes from that preparation. How do you get there every single day? Every single day before you approach the market, you need to do a preparation for the market day. And take a look and see how should I be approaching this market today? I said it this morning after about 20 minutes at the market, it was over that if I could, I would have taken the day off. And I meant that. Because there was nothing going on that I was interested in in the market. Were there some good looking stocks that popped up here and there? There were, but I wasn't interested in chasing them because of the condition of the market. Because I did that preparation for the day and said, you know what? I don't like it. How do you avoid some of those extra losers in your win-loss ratio if you don't respect the market when it's telling you to back off? You don't. You will always be hampered by that if you think, hey, every day I just have to put, boy, I just got to go. I got to go harder and harder and harder and harder today. And I'll tell you what happens when the market is at the worst part. That's when your emotion is at the highest and you push so hard, you create your own mess. You create that big loss because you refuse to back off. Okay. When the market is telling you to back off, respect that and back off. Like the old song goes that that um, Steve likes to play every once in a while. That the the song clip. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. And that's all part of that preparation. Yeah, the gambler. Well, Kenny Rogers.
Who's going to blink first? Does that make sense, guys? We have to know when to back off. We have to know when it's time that the market, our edge, is not there. Even as a day trader, you will see Steve at times just completely back off. As a day trader, he will completely back off and say, you know what, this market's just not for me. Everyone thinks that being successful as a day trader means that you have to trade all the time. Boy, every day, all the time. Ask Steve that question. What's he, what do you think he's going to tell you? Wrong. The key to being a day trader, the key to being a swing trader, the key to being a position trader is the discipline to stay stick to your rules to know when it's time to back off. Okay, if you want that win-loss ratio to improve, you have to work on that area. Does that make sense, guys? So we've talked about some of those key elements to improve your win-loss ratio. We have to start recording our trades and evaluating them. We have to identify those things that are plaguing us constantly in our trading. We're repeating the same mistake over and over and it just keeps costing us and costing us. We have to de build, develop the discipline and the rule to prevent us from doing that again. We have to trade with a goal in mind, with a plan in mind. to keep us grounded in our trading and let us know when we're pushing too hard or, or those kind of things and work toward that goal. We have to take that breath sometimes and say, look, the market is freaking me out right now. And I just want to stand back and watch it from the sidelines and not risk my capital. Because a big part of having a win-loss ratio is avoiding that next loss. Okay. Now what's another key factor of building that win-loss ratio? Closing those losing trades. Not waiting around and hoping. How many have ever felt like this? You enter a trade, you really didn't have a plan in the trade, you didn't have a stop loss. The thing that makes me laugh almost out loud when somebody tells me, yeah, I had a plan, okay, where's your stop? Well, it's a mental stop. Okay, uh-huh. How'd that work out for you? Because what happens with the mental stop? The stop pushes down through there and you're wringing your hands. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's going to pop up. I know it's going to pop up. It's going to pop right back up. I'm sure of it. Yeah, motion kicks in. And then the next morning, the stock gaps down. And what do, what do you hear yourself say then? I can't afford to lose this much money. I got to stay with the trade. Who's ever said that before? Who's ever turned a short-term swing trade into a long-term hold because we didn't want to take the loss? We all have, right?
We have to have that loss. We have to take, that's a part of doing business. Do you guys know you walk into any grocery store and there's dozens of things in that grocery store that they are selling at a loss? That's what's in their ad. Those things that get you to come in and buy other things. Every business you have losses. Every business you have losses. It's no different in trading. But if we don't make the decision, if we don't know when we're going to cut off that loss and we don't do that, we destroy any hope of a win-loss ratio. Okay? So discipline has to come into play on that, that we always have a plan on our trade, that we always know exactly where we're going to be out. And we never take a trade that has more risk in it than we're comfortable taking. I get lots of st stocks posted to me. Hey, what do you think of this trade? It's a $5 stock. It's up 15% on the day. Think I should buy that? What do you guys think my answer to that's going to be? If it's up 15% today, where do you think how much do you how much risk do you want to take to your stop loss? No. That's the discipline of not planning your trade. You're failing on the discipline. You should be able to look at a stock and say, well, geez, that thing's up 6% already. That means my stop loss is probably at least eight or 10. For, I, I, I'll wait for the next entry on that trade. Not interested. But what do we do? Oh my gosh, I'm missing out. Jump in. Never think about what we're risking, just hop in that trade. Oh, I'm missing out. Hurry, 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 jump in the trade. <laughs> it's, uh, Steve's the same way. Yeah. Uh, next. Next. Everybody have sound? Good. So don't do that, guys. Have the discipline to look at that chart and say, okay, well, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful pop today. But that's not my trade. My trade has a risk tolerance of X. What is that? What is that risk tolerance? Is it a percentage, a dollar amount? What are, what's your risk tolerance? That trade is not it. Move on. I can put it in a list, I can mark it up and wait and see if I can get a better entry later on. But I'm done looking at that chart. It's a waste of time. Okay, does that make sense? So we have to develop the discipline to always have a plan with a stop. If you don't do that, guys, you're not going to improve your win-loss ratio. Because you will hit those trades that reverse on you and you take too big a losses. You'll never reach your goals. You know, Sully, we're all that way. I was that way. I mean, literally, I swear, my poor mentor... Um, I would struggle and struggle and struggle. And I, I told you guys, she looked at me one day and she said, Doug, I didn't think you were stupid. And I'm like, what? She goes, you know the rules. You're breaking them all. You're not planning your trade. You don't know where you entered. You don't know where your stop loss was. You don't know how much risk you took in the trade. You don't know if this trade even has the potential of making you more than you risk. And you wonder why you're struggling. 
you wonder why your trading's not improving. And she was right. I was being stupid. I thought I knew better. I thought that those things didn't apply to me. I didn't have to do those. That's for somebody else. That's, you know, that's just lip service. No, it's not lip service. Those are the things you have to do to improve that win-loss ratio. It's very, very important to do those things. All right? So, what I'm trying to show you here, and where I started this tonight, is that most people, if you look at your trades, you'll be surprised. The, most, the majority of you may feel like you are the worst trader in the world. May feel like you've just been stinking up the place forever. Your account's going down. You're going to find out that you're pretty close to a 50-50 trader. And the good news is, the good news is, it only takes little tiny tweaks to fix that. You don't have to go get a new indicator. You don't have to go run any, you know, 10,000 scans. You don't have to have 14 different indicators on your charts. You don't need any of that. You need to evaluate your trades. You need to find out what mistake you continually repeat. You need to set a rule and develop the discipline to stick with it and not do that again. And you'll break it from time to time. And you'll have to go back and do that tough boss thing to yourself. Look, I said I wasn't going to do this again, and I did it again. Stop it. You have to develop a plan for your trade. You need to know the stop. You need to know how much you're risking in that trade. You need to know if that trade has the ability to make more than what you're risking on the trade. You need to know and accept the risk that's in that position. Every single day, I get questions from traders. It's okay, I'm not beating anybody up. But every single day I get questions from traders. Well, I entered this trade yesterday and it's down a little bit today. Should I still be in this? The only thing you focused on so far in that trade is the hard right edge. The way that candle is wiggling around at the very moment. You know what that tells me? You have no plan. You don't know what risk you have in that trade. Because if you're that worried about that candle wiggling around a little bit, you've got no plan. You're out there freewheeling it and wondering why your win-loss ratio doesn't improve. Wondering why you're not winning more money. Because you don't have a plan to win more money. You don't stick with the trade. You don't know what your risk tolerance is. You don't know how much risk you took on the trade. That's why you panic about the hard right edge. Because you've got no plan. Okay. Yeah, the volatility stop can help you a lot in planning your trades. If you're still uncomfortable with planning your trades, Steve's right, that volatility stop will help you a lot. It also helps you identify a lot of times resistance when you're buying a stock right at resistance. Okay, everybody saw Crone today. In fact, I pointed it out early this morning.
That's why I didn't buy Crone this morning. First off, the overall market condition was not a good condition. Second, I was buying it right at resistance. Could it just as easily, if the market would have faltered, could it just as easily failed? Yes. And I will have people that will give me the all kinds of business. Yeah, but you missed out on this trade. I made money on that trade today. All right, you made money on that trade today. The next time you do that, it's going to cost you a bundle. You give it all back. And the next thing that comes out that I hear about is, well, I just, man, this trade has just gone and gone and gone, and I didn't catch this trade. So wait for the next trade. Because if a stock is moving this strongly, and by the way, I made a bunch of money on Crone this year. On marijuana stocks. Let me give you a number. A little over $8,000 this year. ACB was great today, and I brought that one up as well. Okay. Now, if I can make $8,000... trading it when it's easy do I need to try and buy it when it's questionable don't get hung up on the number guys okay don't get hung up on the number what I'm trying to point out here is take the easy trade wait for the easy trade Wait for the higher probability trade. Don't fight the chart at times when it's questionable. See, we don't have to take every trade in the market to be successful. I'm proving that, right? I didn't trade it today. I didn't need to trade it today, but I've still made a lot of money on these stocks. Because I wait for the easy trade. Does that make sense? Just because it's wiggling up today doesn't mean you have to take it. If it doesn't, if you don't like the overall market, if it's time to back off, walk away from that trade. Trade less, make more. Be pickier about the trades that you take. But the volatility stop, Steve, is exactly right. Great way to trade this. And I see this all, I get this question all the time. This trade here, if I don't catch this like right in here in this break of this downtrend, I will not chase this trade up here. I will not do it. I refuse to do it. I will wait for the rest, the consolidation, or the pullback and wait for the next entry into the trade. Every single time. I will not chase a trade, period. I only take trades that have low risk entries. Won't take any other. Have no need to take any other. And I will tell you that I trade far less than a lot of people in the room. You don't have to fight every day. You don't have to fight every trade. Wait for the good setup. Be patient.
One of my favorite sayings of traders, I, I actually used this earlier today in Right Way Options, was for, is from Charlie Munger. He's, he's Warren Buffett's right-hand man. And his quote is, it's, this is a little paraphrased, but the, the ending is, is right on, is that success in trade is not the buying and the selling. Success is in the waiting. It's being patient for the trade. Yeah, I can tell you, Gwen, I've, I've been paying attention to Gwen's posts. She is doing an excellent job with her trading here lately, just really doing a great job with her trading. And look at, look at what she just wrote there. A discipline to wait. Discipline to be patient for the trade. So remember, guys, this whole point of this class tonight was to just talk about those little tweaks. Now, these are important things to be done. But we only need to make little tiny adjustments to improve that, that win-loss ratio. Just little tiny adjustments. And by the way, once you get to like six to four, Six point five to four to three and a half, I should say. When you start moving that ratio up, sixty percent, sixty-five percent. Do you guys know that the tweaks to make that a seventy percent are really small? They're tiny changes. It's making sure that that one winner doesn't turn into a loser. Taking that twenty-five dollar profit rather than letting it go into a loser. It's really small changes to move that move that up into the 70, 75 percent win loss ratio. It's little tiny tweaks. I'm going to leave you guys with a thought, and this is a thought um, you've heard Mike Peterson repeat this over and over and over. Because so much of the time when we're out there in the market, we're looking for that home run hit, right? We just, I just, I need the home run. That's all I can think about. I need that big winner. But he says this all the time. And it's why he's been so successful in his trading. One of the reasons. Because he has this fundamental belief, it's way easier to find five to 10 stocks that are gonna pay me $100 than it is finding one stock that's gonna pay me 1,000. And he looks for those trades to give him those consistent little bumps. And if you guys look back at your trades, you're gonna find that you've had a ton of those where you've had that 100, 150, $200. I had a, I had a coaching, coaching person that had one trade, one trade that would have made their monthly goal. One trade, they were up enough, they would have made their monthly goal and they didn't take the profit because they wanted more money. Oh, Gwen, you're very kind. Thank you. Yeah, that's painful, isn't it? You had it within your grasp. You had your goal. And then you gave it back to the market because you just wanted a little more. <laughs> those stink on ice, don't they, Steve? And you, and and if you record those trades and, and make that personal, you'll never do that again, will you? Never do that again. 
Yeah. I did the same thing. Mine was bigger, though. Mine was a mid five digit loss. Because I got caught up in the hype and I wanted more money. So discipline, patience, having a structure to your trading. And, you know, it, let me ask you this, Gwen, you're, you're um, being so kind to share as much as, as you are today. Um, do you feel, well, I know the answer to this, but... Um, and it may be kind of obvious, but when you exercise discipline in your trading, when you exercise that patience in your trading, do you feel like when you approach the market, when you do make the trade, you're much more confident in the end result? That there's not as much stress in it. There's no anxiety in it. You can handle it better. because you've maintained that discipline. You've made yourself quiet and calm and focused and you know when it's your time to strike and when it's your, your time to keep your hands off that mouse. Discipline. And let me ask you this, Gwen, do you trade less now than you used to but make more? Because I find that all the time. If I can just slow down traders, if I can just slow them down a little bit, have them focus a little bit more on their trades, they trade a little bit less, but they make a lot more. And the reason they're trading less is they're avoiding those mistakes. I love position trades, Gwen. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> but they trade less because they've eliminated those mistakes that they were repeating over and over that were costing them so much. And so they trade less, but they've made, they're making more money. Well, Rebecca, he said it was a $14,000 winner that he turned into a $7,000 loss. I think that's a problem, don't you? He didn't take the profit. And why didn't he take the profit? Just like the rest of us, we want more. Thought it was worth more. It's going to be better than that. It has to be better than that. Okay, so I know this was a lot different than what we normally do, and and I and I appreciate you guys' patience with this tonight, but I know if you take this stuff to heart, if you take this stuff to heart and really dig in and work on it, you'll see an improvement in your trading. Okay, you'll start seeing those results pay off positively in your account. Okay. Take those steps, as boring as it sounds, take those steps to heart and follow through. Don't let something like this, if this meant something to you, don't wait another day to start doing this.
Don't say, well, I, I can't do it this I'll put it this off until next week. Don't wait. Start now. You're the boss. You're the CEO of your company. You're responsible for the end result. Take the reins of it right now and say, I'm not going to let this happen anymore. I'm done playing this game. I'm done back and forth. I'm done with this emotional roller coaster that I'm on. I'm going to gain control of myself and my trading. And I'm going to file, fo follow a simple set of rules and I'm going to be disciplined to them. I'm going to hold myself accountable. Okay. Do those things. Slow down just a little bit. Take that breath. Don't rush into everything. Think about it. Make that decision slowly because it won't matter. If you're entering the trade correctly, you have time to enter the trade correctly. You guys ever notice that you, you, we always think we never have time, never have time to plan a trade. Everything is just moving so quickly. I don't have time for this. But think about how much it would have saved you had you just taken that breath on those losing trades and planned it and realized, you know, that's not my trade. It's too late after the fact. Well, particularly for a day trader, you've got to be, boom, right on it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you don't know how great it is to hear that. Congratul congratulations. Congratulations. I'm going to read this, so, and this is on the recording. Okay, I'm implementing what you explained tonight. It started last week with rigor and discipline. Last week, only six trades, a maximum of $2,166 invested. I had a net gain of $1,178, five wins, one loss of $44. And I'm heading on the same direction this week. Trade less, make more. Discipline, know when it's time to strike. That is such a cool story. I, I, I love those stories. Well done, well done, congratulations. Congratulations. You guys, thank you for being here tonight. Thanks for putting up with this subject. I know it's not one of those flashy, fun subjects, but it's one that will improve your trading if you take it to heart and work on it. It's, it's one of those boring facts in, tra in trading. You got to have the discipline. You got to have the set of rules. You got to know what you're doing when you're going into the trade. You got to think clearly about that trade. Okay, make sure you're prepared for the market day. Don't wake up five minutes before the market opens and sit down and think you're ready to trading trade. You're not. You're not ready to trade. Okay. Make sure you've done that market evaluation. What's going on? What do you need to be thinking about for the day? Where are the risks, the pitfalls? What should you be planning? How should you approach the market for the day? And if you need some help with that, guys, just go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anybody here that doesn't, isn't subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe to that YouTube channel, click that, that uh, bell button, and I do that market preparation every morning. It may not be perfect, and you may want to do other another way to do that, but it's a good place to start. Get prepared for the day. Get focused in. 
And then when you sit down, you have that mindset of how you can approach that market. You avoid that sense of rush. You don't get caught up in all that fear of missing out on the morning gaps and all that baloney that goes on. Okay. You become a better trader. Disciplined trader. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you very much for being here. Appreciate it a ton. I will get this rendered and um, um, sent out to Ed. I'll get it up on the website or on, on YouTube as quick as I can. Um, and then um, it'll be available to watch it um, again. All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you being here. Have a great evening. See you bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you.